Hello again, welcome back. Uh, first of all, I want to just start out by uh, saying that I had a really good time at Salute last week. It was really hectic, it was really stressful, but it was a lot of fun, kind of like it always is. And it was really nice, all the people who stopped by the War Game Soldiers and Strategy booth and kind of said hi and mentioned that they'd seen the videos and kind of wanted to chat a little bit about painting. It was really gratifying. It was nice to kind of get to meet some of the people who watch my videos. It was actually a little bit scary just to see how many people there were there who actually had seen the videos. So that was really cool. Um, so for this week, what I'm going to be painting is something a little bit more oddball again. Um, now, it's been a month or two, I guess, maybe longer than that, but you may remember that I did some 15 millimeter Germans, and I had a lot of fun with that, working with a slightly different scale, you know, it was a bit experimental for me, but, you know, I thought I would like to really try some more kind of different scales, not the standard 28 millimeter, and that's what I'm going to be doing for you this week again. Not 15 this time, but we're going to go down a little bit, and we're going to try 10. So I'm going to be painting these um, 10 millimeter figures for you. And what I have here, these guys are, um, uh, they're AWI Brits. Uh, these particular figures are by Pendragon. They do a ton of stuff in this scale, so they're kind of the go-to place if you want this smaller stuff. And you can see I have based them sort of four up. Uh, this is a lot like when I did the uh, 15 millimeter guys. I wanted to have them all pre-braced and ready to go and just do everything at the same time. Um, obviously, you can um, put your figures on a sort of a temporary base, paint them, and then base them on their final base later, depending on the rules you're going to be using, kind of your taste, whatever. But I prefer if you can all do it in one go. And that's why I only have them based here in a row that's one deep. Because obviously, if you get into two or three deep rows, it's harder for you to kind of pull that off. So this base, I forget how big it is. I think it's maybe four by two. Uh, not entirely sure, but it's around that. With these little guys, you also want to make sure that your figures are um, deep enough set on the base that their guns and whatever are not sticking out off the front because they're very delicate and otherwise they're going to get broken off really easily. So you might want to consider that. The other thing here I've done is I have, like with 15mm, I've applied the groundwork already. You may remember in that case <coughs> I used sort of a mixture of glue and sand and paint. In this case, I what I've done is I've applied Vallejo Sandy Paste along with some Vallejo Chocolate Brown paint. Sandy Paste is gritty too, but it's quite a fine grit. The sort of grit that we normally use to base 15 or even or 28 or even 15 millimeter, I should say, figures is going to be too big and coarse. It's going to look out of scale with these little figures. So that's something you might want to consider. The Sandy Paste is a very very fine grit, so it's just about perfect for taking care of something that is around this scale. The figures have also been given a very light base coat here with black. You can see too that their faces were done, though that was not by me, that was because they were going to be used earlier and then they weren't, so they kind of were started on. But I'm going to just redo all that, so just ignore that. I am going to show you how to paint the faces too. And so, yeah, this is going to be a little bit of an interesting challenge. I think, like the 15 millimeter figures, we're going to be going for really high contrast and sort of reducing out some of the detail that we'd be having in bigger scale figures. And, yeah. I think that's all I'm going to say about these guys, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to start out here by working on the skin areas, and I'm going to be base coating the face and hands, which are the exposed parts in this case, using Vallejo Cork Brown. Now, because the faces had already been painted earlier on, that's going to obviously make some difference to the coverage here. So uh, you may, especially with this black base coat, find you need to give them a couple of coats to make sure that none of the sort of darker black, gray underneath shows through. Once that base coat is dried, I'm going to apply a real heavy wash to the face and hands using Reichland Flesh Shade, which, as you may know, is the same wash that I apply to larger scale figures when I'm painting the skin. At this point, I'm going to depart a little bit from how I normally paint larger scale figures. Instead of going for sort of a mid-tone, I'm going straight up now to Iraqi Sand. Because we're working with a, such a small scale, a uh, really sharp, co harsh contrast is going to be your friend here, so a lot of subtle tones are just going to get lost. So that's why we've gone right 
to this fairly bright tone. And though I have thinned the paint a fair amount, and that's just going to make life easier applying it, you know, at this scale. It'll make sure you have a at least a little bit of control and delicacy. The other thing that I'm doing here is I'm working with a smaller brush. Uh, if that isn't obvious, then you should be doing it. Normally I work with a number one for most of my 28 millimeter stuff. Here I'm using a double zero. I think a zero would work well too, but a double zero was what I had. And so anyway, what I'm doing is I'm basically applying the paint here to pretty much everywhere that I don't want to be a really dark recess. So I'm putting it all over the hands. I'm just not putting it between the fingers and on the face. I'm just, you can't, the face sculpting is a little kind of iffy on these. So I'm just making sure it doesn't go down in the eye sockets or in the mouth or all the areas that should obviously stay really, really dark. And now I'm just going to enhance the sort of the, the, the contrast even further by taking Vallejo black red and adding it in the deep shadows of the skin as a further emphasis. So I'm putting it down the eye sockets, in the mouth, uh, between the fingers where I need it. Uh, you may find as you do this that you kind of make a mess or get it where you don't want it. And that's pretty easy to do at this scale, obviously. So then you can just keep your Iraqi sand handy and just kind of go back over and touch up those areas that you want to keep extra light as you work. Finally, I'm going to get one final high highlight on the skin. I'm going to take some white here and just mix in a tiny bit of the Iraqi sand just so it's not pure white. It has a slight fleshy cast. And I'm going to just dot this on sort of areas where I want extreme highlight, like the tip of the nose, the top of the cheeks, maybe sort of along the knuckles on the fingers. Just very sparing, just kind of dot the paint around, you know, where you see fit so that you can give it just a little bit of extra accent. Now, of course, since these are 18th century uh, soldiers, there's going to be a lot of white on them. It's pretty ubiquitous at this period that the units wore, you know, a fair amount of white uh, clothing or equipment. Uh, in this case, we're talking about the pants, the waistcoat, uh, the turn backs on the back of the jacket, and of course, all of the straps are going to be white. So in order to paint these areas on these little guys, I have taken some Vallejo Sky Gray, and I'm just going to very carefully base coat all of those areas. Well, actually not that carefully because I haven't painted enough of this figure for it to really, really matter that much. But, you know, just try to make sure you get good, thorough coverage everywhere and you don't leave off certain areas. I actually uh, forgot some straps and I forgot to paint the turnbacks initially and I had to go back in later and add all of those areas in. I'm now going to apply a wash to the white gray areas and I'm using uh, just known oil for this but I've watered it down slightly though not so much as if I was doing a 28 millimeter figure because I don't want the effect to be quite so subtle here. Again we want higher contrast on these guys but we still don't want to leave it at full strength because that would just be a little bit too dark and that would be overdoing it slightly. Now I'm just going to take some white paint which I've thinned a little bit but not too much just enough so it flows. And I'm going to start applying it to all of these areas that are supposed to be white. You can see I'm making no attempt to do any real blending here as I would at 28 millimeter or to even a degree at 15 millimeter. I'm just <clears throat> really applying it all of the areas that I think should be white. And you can see I'm just leaving sort of areas, it, sort of dividing areas in between that gray color. So sort of in between the cuffs of his pants, sort of in the bend of his uh, knee, between his calf and thigh. Uh, all those sort of places, anywhere where there's lines or seams, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just leaving those there. And I'm even sort of painting in some folds and wrinkles in the pants just by making sort of streaks or stripes around the pants and letting the sort of the darker gray form the, the shading part of those wrinkles. Uh, because we're working at such a small scale, um, you probably won't need to apply too many coats of the white, but again, it is white. It's very transparent, so it builds up slowly. Uh, I went over these guys sort of one initial pass, and that did most of the work. I then went back for a second pass, and I used that to put extra emphasis on some areas that I really wanted to be bright. Uh, like the knees and anywhere where you know you imagine light would be hitting the tops of the straps on his shoulders 
uh, you know, just anywhere you want to brighten up because you expect it to just be, you know, more, have more light hitting there. But you shouldn't have to spend nearly as much time uh, doing this as if you were working on white at a larger scale. Now because we're painting red coats, it's time to do the ubiquitous red coats. I'm using the same uh, techniques, the same shades I would do here to paint a larger scale figure. So I'm going to take all of the areas of the coat that should be red and I'm going to apply a base coat of Vallejo Black Red. At this point you're going to start having to be a little bit more careful about where you put the paint. You can't just slop it on anymore. So since all those white areas have already been painted you're going to need to apply the red rather carefully and you know you know watch where you're, what you're doing so that you don't you know mess up those areas that you've just completed now in order to highlight the red i'm taking here a citadel mephiston red which i've thin just a little bit and you can see I'm just going to apply it to most of the red areas. It's going to be a little bit transparent over that super dark black red so that makes some nice shading effects automatically without really having to do any blending. It just happens that way. But I'm just going to put it anywhere where I expect there to be any sort of light hitting. I'm just going to make sure I try to keep that really dark black red uh, in between sort of as a dividing color where that you know the coat is separates or is divided from a different area of the uniform and just like with larger scale figures I'm gonna get one final really bright highlight in the red here with evil sun scarlet which is a layer color from Citadel here I'm just gonna be popping this on areas where I would expect there to be a highlight where a light would be hitting. So you can see I'm applying especially along the tops of the arms and the tops of the shoulders here, uh, you know, in between the turn backs, those kind of things. But again, you're not going to have to really do any blending here. The red, as I've said before, tends to really blend itself anyway, so you don't really have to do that. I'm just going to make sure I apply it to any areas where I want it, the uniform to feel brighter. I'm going to take this opportunity to really quickly paint the hair where you can see it's not very much. Now you could do different hair colors on these guys. It would probably be more interesting, but at this scale, you know, you're not going to see it very much. So I'm just going to do everybody the same. I'm going to go here and use Vallejo Leather Brown as a base, though it really any kind of medium brown shade will work. Once I've got the base coat on, I'm then going to mix in some of that cork brown and I'm using that just because I already had it out from painting the skins and I'm going to use that to lighten up the leather brown and then I'm going to apply that sort of over the uh, hair in areas where it's you know not really in the shadow just to kind of give a highlight. I mean admittedly this may be a little bit subtle for this scale but uh, you know I, I don't want to just spend too much time or get too busy worrying about how the hair looks here. Now I'm going to be painting the facings on the uniform. Obviously the color you use here is going to depend entirely on whatever regiment you're painting. So, but I don't have any sort of specific requirements for this so I decided to go with blue just because it's a color I like and it's one that I had handy. So I'm base coating the uh, cuffs and the collar and the lapels here using dark Prussian blue and there's no real trick here. Yeah, just again, because we've got a lot of other things already painted, you need to be take your time and be neat and not let the paint get on the finished areas of the soldiers' uniforms. Now I'm going to highlight the blue areas, and since we're all about getting super high contrast here, I've taken Vallejo Deep Sky Blue and I've mixed it pretty generously into the dark Prussian blue. So you can see there's a really big jump. Uh, between our base coat and our higher shade and it may be a little bit extreme and it would be definitely too extreme if we were painting a larger scale but here you just need to really just exaggerate every color you apply should be way exaggerated so I'm just going to apply it to all of those blue areas but emphasizing of course the areas where there'd be light hitting and leaving that dark Prussian blue down in the shadows uh, you can then even take just some pure deep sky blue if you want and just sort of touch it to the very highest highlight areas that you want to have just for further emphasis. Now I'm going to move on to all the sort of black gray leather areas and there's quite a few of these. At this point I'm just doing the base coating but there's a lot of 
parts to do and again we have to be careful not to mess up our existing paintwork so uh, I'm going to be base coating the uh, shoes here as far as they show of course you want to do the hat uh, that's take some time because you need to get under the brim and not mess up the face but the feathers too uh, sometimes depending on the regiment these could be different colors but often in, these would have been sort of a black color so they're going to be base coated in black as well uh, you want to get the uh, scabbard on the officer you'll want to get the bayonet cases on the regular units you'll want to of course get the uh, the uh, cartridge case that's going to be a black leather and one of the soldiers is carrying a canteen and we're going to base coat that in black as well so it's just really about finding all the areas and you may also want to do just a little thin black line uh, dividing where their hair kind of divides from their ponytail to sort of indicate a little bow or tie there in that particular location. Now I'm going to highlight the feathers. I want them to be a slightly different color than everything else because feathers are often, black feathers often have sort of a bluish tint to them. So I've mixed a little bit of the deep sky blue into some German gray and I'm going to use that sort of to put a highlight on the feathers. And you can add even more blue for extreme highlight at the very tip. Now I'm just going to highlight all those black and leather areas. Uh, normally, you know, when I highlight <coughs> black grays. I tend to go for quite a subtle effect. So I'll use a German gray and then I'll mix in a little lighter gray and I'll gradually step it up so I don't overdo things. In this case I want a big bang straight away. So I've gone straight in with neutral gray here and I'm going to apply a little dot of highlight on the shoes, a sort of a stripe of it along the bayonet cases and the scabbard. Uh, and then sort of along the top edge and sides of the cartridge case. And then on the hats, you can see I'm going to run a ring of it kind of around the brim and around sort of that top part as well. And that, you know, that seems like a really extreme emphasis, but at this scale, it's, you know, it's going to look good. Uh, and in fact, you may even want to go further with it in some cases. I ended up actually taking some sky gray and added it into my neutral gray to lighten it even more and then I use that to apply an even more extreme highlight here and there just dotting it onto the tips of the toes along the edge of the hat here and there along the top of the cartridge case just the same basically put in the same areas that I just did but then just even smaller amounts of it for even brighter more extreme emphasis because I feel like just two colors even on these guys you know it, it doesn't it just doesn't look like quite enough you need more different colors there which is why I felt like I needed to add that extra highlight now the type of hats these guys are wearing are basically uh, tricorns that have been kind of smashed or bicorns whatever um, so that means they should have a white rim on them and all you need to do for this is get some white paint thin it down so it flows easily and just carefully run a white line around the brim nothing fancy at a larger scale I would probably do this first with a gray color and then highlight it with white but here that's not necessary and you can just go directly to the white Now I'm going to be painting the soldiers mess bags. I'm just going to base coat these very quickly here with some um, khaki from Vallejo. And then once that is dry, you want to just go back in with a sort of a much lighter yellow color. You can use either dark sand, buff, something like that. And just kind of lightly go over those areas on the bag that you feel like you want to uh, highlight. I'm going to base coat the wooden parts of the muskets now. Uh, I used um, Foundry uh, Bay Brown Medium for this, but you can use really any other sort of dark to medium brown shade. It doesn't matter a whole lot. For example, Vallejo Chocolate Brown or something similar would work really well here. Uh, you, since you're painting the guns, feel free to sort of overpaint them. As a matter of fact, that'll work out better. Later on, we'll come back in and pick out the barrels and that kind of thing. But it's better to err on the side of sort of overpainting these so that there's no areas that get left out. Also, you want to put a base coat on. There's one soldier here who's got kind of a furry bag, and I'm going to base coat it using that same dark brown color. Now I'm going to highlight the wooden areas of the guns and I've just taken some foundry chestnut me or medium I should say yeah and gone straight in 
Uh, normally, you know, when I paint wood, I would uh, put another layer in there first, but again, high contrast here. So we're going straight from the really dark brown up to that medium uh, chestnut shade. And I'm just running it along all the different wooden parts of the gun and leaving that dark uh, brown as a separator. At the same time, I'm gonna take some Nuln Oil and quickly apply a heavy wash to the fur bag. Now I'm gonna start picking out the steel kind of metal areas. I'm using the same color here I usually do for this. So I've taken some German gray and mixed a little bit of Vallejo Air gun metal into it. And I'm gonna paint the barrels on the gun, uh, the flintlock mechanism. I'm also gonna apply a sort of a light highlight of it to the canteen that one soldier is carrying. And of course you don't wanna forget the officer. He's got a sword or saber there instead of a gun and you want to of course paint the blade in that same color as a base. Once that has dried then you can highlight just by taking some pure Vallejo Air gun metal and sort of lightly brushing it along the uh, sort of gun barrel, the gun mechanism and maybe a little bit lightly on that canteen. You can apply it more heavily to the sword blade just because you want it to be shinier and lighter so feel free to go more to town there. I also finished off by taking some Vallejo Air steel and applying an extra highlight to that sword blade just because and I wanted it really shiny. You can put a bit on the tip of the bayonets as well. Now there's a few small bronze brass areas I want to do here. I'm using a mixture of German camouflage black brown with a little layer of gold in it to paint the guards on the gun triggers and around the hilt of the officer sword, base coating it with that, and then taking just quickly some pure Vallejo Air gold to highlight. I'm also going to quickly highlight that fur bag with just some uh, foundry chestnut shade, just kind of emphasizing along the edges and along the front of the bag. I'm pretty much done with the figure, so now I'm gonna take care of the groundwork. I'm gonna start out here by taking some foundry rawhide medium, and I'm gonna lightly dry brush all over the base around all the figures, just trying to be careful not to get it onto the painted areas. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna add a second lighter dry brush by taking some Iraqi sand, and I'm gonna just do the same thing, dry brushing it, but then just even lighter and just more subtly going around the base and the figures. Now I'm gonna apply some white glue to the base and dip the whole thing in some railway flock. I'm using that because it's small and the correct scale for these figures. Now I wanna put some tufts down. Now getting tufts the right size for something like this can be tricky. I used army painter tufts and I found some that they made that were really quite tiny. So for 28 millimeter, they look real small, but they're about the perfect scale for this 10 millimeter work here. All right, and here is our finished base of four 10 millimeter AWI Brits. Uh, this was an interesting experiment for me. Uh, it was a lot like painting those 15 millimeter Germans, but even more so, and I mean even more so in the sense that that involved really reducing down the colors, simplifying the technique, and this was the same thing, but then even more reduced and even more simplified. And again, the thing to remember as you go down in scale, you want to go higher contrast, you want to simplify. So I'm, I'm using the same techniques, basically I use it 28 millimeter. I'm just cutting down the number of steps, taking out some of the color layers I would put on bigger figures and just going almost from the more extreme shadow color straight to the lighter colors without the gradations. That would be in between on, you know, bigger figures where you could really see that and appreciate it. So. Uh, I hope you found this interesting, you got some ideas from it. Um, as always, please leave me comments, let me know what you like, what you didn't like, that kind of thing. Share it with your friends, like the video, you know, so that I know you found it useful, of course. And you can always also subscribe to my channel, of course, so that you can keep up with the latest updates. So that is all for now, and I will see you next time.